What is up? Thank you for coming to my channel, Prison POV. So, shout out to Bama Boy Steve. What's up, homeboy? He's a grandpa. He had his first grandkid, grandchild. Shout out to Bama Boy Steve. Shout out to his daughter. And shout out to his new grandkid, Miles. May the Lord bless and keep you guys, brother. And I'm very happy for you that you have your first grandkid. That's awesome. Also, if you notice, I'm wearing this shirt from the last video. Metallica Master of Puppets. I never ever would wear two shirts simultaneously. That's not word. Why simultaneously? That's worthy of all. I should stop this video and start all over. Same stupid shit like that. Simultaneously. I would never wear two shirts in a row like that in a video. But I'm doing it because I forgot to shout out the homeboy who gave me this shirt last time. And I wore it in the last video. Wore it and forgot to shout him out. So the homeboy. How do I say it, man? Bleak. Homeboy Bleak. Shout out to Bleak. Shout out to Rialto. That's where he's from. Good looking out. I love the shirt, homeboy. Now, Rialto, man, they got a good car. They got a bunch of solid dudes. When I was at Solid Dad, I was on lockdown. Me and Cho were on lockdown the cell right there. And someone, one of the woods down the tier shot us some pinochle cards. So I sat there playing, and Trouble was smashing me. He was winning. Every single game, he was putting the fucking smash down. I got aggravated. I lost my temper. Ended up grabbing the cards and freaking... Fucking <clears throat> cards! And I told the woods who gave us the cards. Hey, home boys, the cards got messed up. I apologize. They said those weren't our cards. They belonged to a south sider down the tier from Rialto. We're like, oh, fuck. Damn, I can get some serious trouble for some bullshit like that. Messed up another race's cards. He was kind enough to let us use them, and I destroyed them. I was like, fuck. So I started shooting a bunch of kites out, trying to get a brand new set of pinup cards to replace them, and I couldn't. Couldn't get no cards. So I shot him a kite. I said, hey, brother, um, is there any way I can get these cards? I appreciate it. I didn't tell him that I ruined him. I just said, I really like these cards. We've got them attached. Can I keep them? Can I have them? Can I buy them? He said, yeah, it's all good. They're your cards. So, man, dodge a bullet on that one. So, thirsty. I have one right here. It's open. Tripping. Got this one. Anyways. I'm going to change this shirt because I'm superstitious. I cannot wear the same shirt two videos in a row. And now that I shout out, Bleak, thank you, homeboy, for the shirt. Give me a minute. I didn't go too far, I'm just right here. From one great album to another. Alright, so, I fucked up, man. I really fucked up. I wanted to quit smoking weed. I need to quit smoking weed. I need to get the shit out of my system. I need to stop. I got a drug test to pass the beginning of October. I need to quit smoking this pot, man. I want to stop on the 1st, September 1st. I fucked up, man. I didn't stop. I smoked. So I thought, okay... The second, the following day, which was yesterday, I should be able to quit. And I didn't. Fucked up again yesterday. But in my defense, I had a homeboy coming over who put a new faucet in for me. Kitchen faucet in. And he grows weed. So I knew he was going to bring some weed over. So when he showed up with his weed, I couldn't be like, hey man, I quit smoking. He'd be like, when? When'd you quit? I'd say, you know, today. Today, the day you decide to bring your weed over here, I decide, fuck that, I'm done. I'm walking away from it. Now, I don't want to put like that. But I can't say, no, I just quit today, man. I guess I could have. I'm like, oh, I quit. Decide to quit. Today's the day. But no, he came over, he bought some of his weed, so I wanted to blaze with him. That left today. I could have stopped today, and I didn't. See how I mean? Just keep fucking up. But I have to stop tomorrow, man. I'm putting my motherfucking foot down. Stopping tomorrow. I even got these pills. Wait. A lot of you guys think that one week of this seven-day detox will not work. How about two weeks? And don't forget about the green tea. Green tea all day. I do have the seven-day detox. And someone left me a nasty comment. And let me give you guys a heads up. Just because you erase your comment doesn't mean I, that I don't see it. I still see it. You just erase it. No one else can see it. But I see all these nasty comments. People leave me. Then they decide to erase it. And someone was trying to clown me. Saying, what an idiot. He thinks he's going to withdraw off marijuana. He's getting some withdrawal pills. No, fool. I'm saying about withdrawing. Detoxing. I'm trying to detox. Trying to get all the weed out, man. Because it's kind of fucked up. You can do meth and heroin and shit. The drugs out of your system in three days. Smoke weed. It's there like fucking nine months later. So I'm, I'm thinking these will help. I'm going to start taking them. And I think in two weeks, I'll be clean. And I'm going to start doing burpees. I want to start today with the burpees. But yesterday, I went and mailed a letter. The mailbox at the end of my street. I sprinted down there. I do that every once in a while. I just come up my front door. Just break. Take off. Hold on as fast as I can. Sprint down to the mailbox. So I went down there. It's the end of the street, like I said. Mailed the letter. Then on the way back, I thought, I'm going to lunge. Not all the way to my house, I'm going to do a couple lunges. For you, those of you who do not know where lunge is, this is basically a lunge. You know what we do like that? 
I'm gonna lunge a couple lunges, I thought. Then I saw some people on their porch and they were watching me. Mine, they weren't watching me. We have eyeballs that are close by, so actually the chance is good they could have been watching, but it shouldn't matter, and it didn't. But the point is, since they were watching me, whether they were or not, I felt like I had to keep going. I could not stop. I did a couple lunges, noticed them noticing me. I was like, keep going, Splinter. It's gonna make it look like you can't, they had to stop after these five or whatever. So anyway, what I'm trying to say is peer pressure got to me. I lunged all the way to my house, and I'm paying for it now. I'm really fucking feeling it in my arse and in my thighs from fucking lunging all the way to my fucking house. Stupid, I won't be doing that again. So that's gonna mess up my burpee routine for sure. So, I'm not even sure if I could do 123 burpees right now. What I'm gonna do is I'm aim for 100 burpees, then do 23 push ups. There's your 123. Sometimes in prison, if you fuck up, if you do something wrong, they'll make you do 123 burpees as a discipline. It's fucked up because you're off in the corner working out and everyone knows you're over there, you're in trouble and you look all stupid. They know you fucked up and did something wrong. So I had to do 123 several times for fucking up. Matter of fact, first time in prison, right off the bat, didn't even make it to mainline yet. In there on my first term, Wasco reception, right away, did something stupid, had to do 123 for the fucking house, for the wood pile. And here's what I did wrong. Chip on this, wasn't even really my fault. What happened was, I borrowed a book off somebody. It wasn't in the greatest shape. There wasn't no pages missing. It didn't have a cover though. It was a good book. It was in decent shape, like I said. Definitely wasn't brand new. Someone loaned it to me. Another guy, some dude I didn't even really like. I mean, I guess I didn't dislike him. But he's kind of just, I don't know, he, oh, he tried to act fucking crazy. I was kind of like, eh. I sped him with a long spoon, put it that way. And he was kind of buff. He was a buff dude, but what was weird was these right here, this muscle, what is it, traps? Those were even bigger than everything else. It didn't even match. Like he was like, had hood and arms, but then that were big, I guess. Then he had these, were huge, gargantuous, and he would always be like flexing them. He'd, he'd be always like, maybe that's why they're big. I don't know. These motherfuckers right here were fucking ginormous, and he'd always be like, flexing them all the time. I didn't care for him. He's all right. Anyways, he noticed I had that book, and he's like, hey, man, let me borrow that book. I said, I can't. It's not my book. I'm going to give it back to the guy who I borrowed it from. He goes, oh, man, come on. Let me borrow it, dude. I said, just go ask him. Get it from him. He'll let you read it. And he goes, no, he probably has a long line of people. Just let me read it real quick, dude. Come on, man. I'm a fast learner. Now, back in the day, you could talk me out of shit. You could probably a little pressure on me, especially my first term. A dude who did some prison time. You, know, you, you want people to be your friend and shit. You want people to like you. Now, I don't fall for that kind of pressure. If I say, no, nah, dude, it's not my book. I can't loan it to you. And you fucking, ah, oh, come on. I'll just fucking walk away. I ain't going to try to hear it. But back then, I buckled around with the pressure. I said, fuck, all right, man. Give him the book. And I didn't feel good about it. I knew I was kind of fucking up. And I felt off about it. Like I said, he applied that pressure. Come on, man. I said, fuck it. I gave him the book. So a couple days later, I'm sitting there minding my own business. And the guy who I loaned the book to comes up to me and says, Splinter. He goes, can I have my book? Right when he said it, dude, my fucking stomach just, boom. I don't know how they say it. Oh, yeah, my heart went to my stomach. Something like, boom. Something happened. I was like, um, just your, your book? He's like, yeah, I go, I don't have it right now. He goes, I know because I do. And he shows it to me. And it was all fucked up. In fact, it was held together by a rubber band. Not a rubber band, but like a glove. You know, a little piece at the end of a glove. Snap. Boom. That thing. He wrapped around the book because pages were missing. Pages were loose. I was like, what the fuck? I was like, I didn't even know what to say. I was like, oh man, I learned the fucking dude. He goes, yeah, but what the fuck? But when I gave him the book, it did not look like that. He goes, he said that when you gave it to him, it did look like this. And he goes, Splinter Man, you shouldn't even loan my book out. I go, okay, I know I fucked up by loaning it out. But did he say when I gave it to him, it was fucked up, missing pages, and had the fucking rubber band around? He goes, yes. And I was really pissed. Mad that he stabbed me in the back and went and told the dude I gave him the book. What the fuck was that all about? But that he destroyed it. Made it look like I destroyed it. I was pissed. So I went and got my homeboys. So I want to rush this fucking fool. And I need to tell my homeboys about it. I want to get a heads up. I want to fucking fight this motherfucker. He just tried to... I feel like he targeted. Trying to make me look bad. He put a fucking jacket on me like I fucked that book up. Maybe it looked stupid. In front of me off that I gave it to him. And I shouldn't have. So, hold up. I want to get busy with them. I don't give a fuck at those traps. Or a fucking gargantuous. So I told my homeboys, hey, I'm going to get busy with this dude. Told them that everything, he, that didn't sound right. Told my homeboys, hey, I want to get busy with this dude. Told him everything that had transpired. This is no kickback. They're, he's getting ready to get removed right now during a trip. Something way bigger than that happened. Now trip on this. This is what dude had done. The dude who did that weird shit with the book. I gave it to him when I shouldn't have. And he gave it to the guy, that crazy guy. Someone saw him going to the bathroom. 
and take his hand, put it all on his freaking butt crack, and then go out. There's four guys playing pinochle and he was doing this to him. After putting his hand on his balls and his butt crack, went out to these guys playing pinochle and was just doing this type of shit. They're sitting there minding their own business, playing some pinochle and he's this. I was probably bugging him, but he was doing that. He's like, stop. But they're busy with pinochle. They're not really paying attention to it. People do that sometimes. They'll be fucking with you. But yeah, it was all up in his crack and he went and rubbed on their fucking faces and people saw that. Went and told those fucking dudes and now they're going to fucking beat the fuck out of him. So I told my homeboys, I went action with them and they said, no nah, man, something way bigger is going to happen. They're going to beat his ass and they did. And then I started thinking about it too. I think he came up to me and he borrowed the book off me. He was like, hey Splinter, let me borrow that book, man. I do think I remember him fucking doing that. Ain't that a bitch. So fuck, man. Anyways, I ended up having to do 123 burpees for loaning the book out, getting involved in that drama. He did end up getting his ass beat and get rolled out of there. After that, real cautious about people who want to fucking touch me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Where your hands been? Fuck all that. One time I was really, really out of shape. Like I am now. And I'm going to do these burpees tomorrow. I know I'm out of shape. You have muscle memory, you'll get it back fast, but you lose it quick too. You can be doing burpees every day for a fucking year and stop for a month, and then when you come back, they're gonna be fucking rough. It's like you lose it quick. And I was doing my four year term. I was in Arizona. It seems like when I'm doing time, right before I get ready to go home, I kind of stop working out anyway. So you feel like I got as big as I'm gonna get. When you have a lot of time left, you're driving, driving, trying to get big. And then when you get ready to go home, you're like, no, I got a hair or something in my nose. I don't wanna pause it, fuck it. Ah! You're driving, driving. Trying to get big, but when you get close to the house, you feel like I'm as big as I'm gonna get. Fuck it. So I kind of quit driving. We're in Arizona on lockdown. Starving Marvin over something silly. It was a little five on five melee in the kitchen between whites and Southsiders. They got into it. Little melee, five on five, wooden the Southsiders in the kitchen. It wouldn't have been nothing. Probably locked down for a week. But when something like that happens, they take the two reps or whatever and have them talk about it put, bring them out put everyone locked down bring the reps out have them figured out what the fuck's going on when they did that the south side si blah, blah, blah. slow down cut the tin the south side of rep stabbed the wood rep so they throw us on a real big lockdown For like 45 days they're still locked down when i left to go to kern valley so i'm in there my cell in that lockdown hungrier than a two-headed shark i said fuck it i'm not working out went through all of our food real quick we had that much. Besides there, you only go to store once a week. You don't really fucking stock up that much. We're in CDC. We're in California. In their prison, you go to store once a month. You get fucking rations for a month there. Only rations for a week. Burn through that shit. The food they were giving us was fucked up. They are giving us dinner, and it was rice. It's supposed to be rice with pork. There ain't no pork. Kind of like pork and beans. You need beans and a little bit of fat. There ain't no motherfucking pork in a can of pork and beans. I'm going to tell you that much. There's beans, a little bit of fat, and they gave us rice and pork. Fuck that. There ain't no pork. It's rice. And they would give us some kind of vegetable, like three or four little tiny carrots or fucking broccoli or some bullshit. What they did, they grabbed the fucking spoon that didn't have holes in it. It was an unholy spoon. They should have used a spoon with holes in it so the water wouldn't come with it. And you just pick up the fucking vegetables, put in your tray. But no, a fucking spoon, a big old ladle like this, take all the water with it. And they dump it on your tray. So any cookie, bread, cornbread, anything like that was soaking wet from the fucking vegetable juice. It was nasty and shit. And it was just rice. Rice and vegetable water is what you got for dinner. I was so hungry, my fucking stomach think that my throat had been slit. Hungry than a two-headed shark. It definitely was not going to work out. You can't work out when you're hungry. So I laid in my bed for 45 days, and that locked down. Just get up to make some coffee and jump right back up there. I had motherfucking cable TV, 30-something channels, our remote control, Xbox. I went doing shit. We're on lockdown. Fuck it. Door ain't going to open. We ain't going nowhere. I'm kicking back right here. Plus, I'm close to the house. Mentally, I'm already on the fucking streets. Which is... Kind of like a dangerous mind state to get into. Be that as it may. So then, come to snatch me up, transfer me to Kern Valley. I'm getting close to the house, should be back to California. I get to motherfucking Kern Valley, New Delano, and they lost my C file. Throw me in the hole. So I went from being in Arizona, kick back up in the fucking sack, playing Xbox and my mobile to watch TV, to in the fucking hole at Kern Valley with two dudes from Peni, two lifers. And they got a hardcore fucking workout routine, let me tell you that much. They were with the fucking beeswax. And this routine was fucking hardcore. And I was struggling. They're like, how long have you been down? I'd been down like two and a half years at this point. No excuse for it. Now, a lot of times I was in the hole at Solid Dad. The wood number everybody knows is 23. We do 123 burpees. Or we do something like chain breakers or something is 23. Lunges is 23. Burpees is 123. Just depends. 
what the exercise is. Whether it's going to be 123 or 23. But when I was with these two P9 dudes in the hole, no, it was 88 or 188. And that's a big motherfucking difference. And they're doing shit like this too. They're chain breakers. Instead of going 1, 2, 3, 23 of those. 4, 5. No, they're like this. 1, 2, 3, 1. 1, 2, 3, 2. I can't even do it. I was all discombobulated. You get the point. They were adding all kinds of extras. I was like, <gasps> dying a slow death. And like, hey, bro, if you need to take a break, man, go ahead, man. Kick back and take a break if you need one. Uh, didn't really feel like they were honestly offering me a break. Had they said, hey, man, like, if you need a break, everything's cool. Do you want some water? We can slow it down and kick back for a minute. I'm like, <gasps> yeah, yeah, break. But the way they said, hey, man, you want another like this. Hey, man, you need to take a break. Go ahead, kick back, take a break if you need to. I'm like, uh, no, nah, man, nah, I'll keep going, bro. Fucking straight killed me. Killed me. That was a hardcore ass fucking routine. 88 of everything, 188 of everything. And I, even after the routine, they want to keep on going and do some fucking bullet. So I think they're fucking, it was me in this cage by myself, and they were over there. They're like squatting each other. This straight fucking beast. So, that's about it. Should I cut the string and let this fly, or should I keep going? Man, I have more to go, but see, it's 16 minutes. I don't want to get to a story and take too long. I'll just release another video tomorrow. Put that on everything. You guys call me out on it. If another video does not come out tomorrow, feel free to fucking tear me up in the comments. You do anyway. You don't need my permission, huh? Cut the string, let it fly. Peace!